Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining us live. Let me know what you're looking forward to. Let me know if you can hear me okay and maybe where you're tuning in from. So this is the monthly live class for November. And you guys have voted for a very interesting topic, which has everything to do with horse training, but can also help for anything else you would like to do. So please let me know in the chat if everything's working for you. Then if there are no urgent questions from the start, I will be sharing my presentation in a moment. Okay. Let me, hi, Kim from the UK and I can hear you very well. Thank you, Kim, for letting me know. That's always a good, good check before I start sharing and talking away. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Kim. I hope you're having a very nice Sunday and also had some horse time today. So, I have prepared some slides for our topic today. And the topic that we are going to talk about is three steps to get off the couch and go right. So how do I find motivation when it's winter, when it's dark outside, when my couch is so comfortable and maybe there are some new series out on Netflix and all the other stuff that we can get distracted by. How do we still keep the motivation going? Like uh, we had maybe in summer after work, it's still nice out and we could just go riding. And now maybe in winter time, we can need some tips and tricks to keep that up. So here we go. During this live class about motivation for riding, we are going to, to go through some important steps for you to find back motivation or find more motivation. First of all, we need to acknowledge the fact that sometimes we are not so motivated. It's normal, everybody has it. We need to acknowledge uh, that it is the case. And then we need to understand where this comes from, because then we will be able to reframe what's happening. And from there, uh, find our way to the ultimate solution to having low motivation. And since that ultimate solution might still be a bit far away from our situation today, uh, I will give you three tips that you can start using right away and then maybe move towards that ultimate final goal of always finding motivation and always doing what we want to do. And then, of course, uh, you don't have to go through everything alone finding better ways, so I will also share how others can be helpful in this. So first of all, let's be honest with ourselves and acknowledge the spirals we can get in. You've probably uh, noticed at some point in your horse journey that you can be in a positive spiral. Every time that you ride, you already have a success and you want to do more. And the next day you can't wait to go riding again. And sometimes there are also some small things that can keep us from riding as much as we want. And uh, this can get us into a downward spiral. So just acknowledge for yourself without even putting any meaning to it um, right away. 
When was the last time you wanted to write but you didn't? Is this recent? Does this happen on a regular basis? Is it only now and then? Or throughout the whole winter you have problem with this? And think about for yourself, really honestly, how does that make you feel? When you think about, I, I wanted to go right, then I didn't, how did you feel afterwards? Like when it was already maybe 11 p.m. and you're going to bed and you're like, hmm, too bad I didn't get to riding today, I wanted to, I didn't, and how do you feel afterwards? Is it like, oh well, I'll just ride tomorrow, or is there this little negative taste to it, ne a negative emotion lingering? And then if you feel that way, what did you make it mean about yourself? So if you know your horse needs his training, his movement, and um, you don't ride or train as often as you would like, and you think you should do better, what does that mean about you in that moment? Do you make it mean anything about yourself? Are you really like, oh, I'm lazy, I'm not good enough, we need to acknowledge what is happening there because this could be a downward spiral that then triggers having even less motivation because then you feel bad about yourself and you get in a very low energy state. So you get in a frequency of demotivation of even wanting to do less because, well, I'm already not doing enough. So then you skip another day and another day. So if you can catch yourself going down this spiral, uh, when you are really often not having the motivation to ride as much as you'd like, then think about this and acknowledge what happens when you really don't go and if that motivates you even less. So where is this coming from? We need to understand how our brain works if we want to do something about it. You need to understand that we are all human. And if we look back to our evolution long, long ago, when we are living in our caves to try and survive and stay safe, our thinking brain was designed to keep us safe, to survive. And um, this is actually the sole reason why we procreated and um, yeah, evolved as a species. So. This is so ingrained in our whole being, in our DNA, in our design of our nervous system. And it is our top priority still to stay safe. So what does safe mean? In this case, for a horse owner, <laughs> safe could be stay in your modern cave, stay comfortable, stay warm, don't go out into the cold, don't exert yourself just preserve your energies and uh, stay at home. So this is really something um, part of us. Everybody has this. Even people that are wildly successful, they also sometimes choose to have a lazy day. <laughs> and it's because of that. Um, and actually, we need to see this as a positive thing because being lazy is what brought humankind this far. The first warriors that trusted themselves to jump on a horse were really smart. They could run faster and travel farther away without being more exhausted themselves. So they could conquer the world around them because they were being lazy in a way. And later also during the Industrial Revolution, Every invention, really good inventions that have been uh, bringing us further along as humankind uh, were inventions that would make our world more comfortable and easier. Uh, we could travel faster, we could save more energy, uh, save labor and have more things done by machines. So we would have easier work and we can consume faster and more. So always get what we need. Um, so remember that in our humanness, uh, being lazy and not wanting to use more energy than needed is really what brought us this far. And I'm actually pretty grateful for it because it also means that 
you and I can be exchanging this information right now um, and connecting with horse people from all over the world. So let's not see being lazy only as a negative thing and understanding uh, where this is coming from. So now you might ask yourself, why didn't we stay in our caves? What was the reason that we got out and the first man ever to ride a horse decided to catch one and jump on a horse? Well, this is what I refer to as our sole purpose. We are so lucky that we do not only have our thinking brain that keeps us safe. We also have our soul, our heart, our passion, and that is willing to make our life more interesting and worth living. So we don't only want to be safe and comfortable. Once we have everything we need, all the bases are covered, then we want to have some fun. We want to do something exciting. And um, that is the heart versus brain conversation. So um, if you have a passion like horse riding, this is really coming from your heart, from your soul. You have a passion, you want to ride, you have your own horse. So you know it's important that uh, you cover all the bases for your horse and give him uh, enough exercise and enough attention and that everything is covered. So. If there is a day where um, your energy is low and you're demotivated and you don't have that, that power, that energy to go, um, then don't give it a bad meaning about yourself. Don't feel bad about it because that will also um, dim your light let's say so you have a passion you have a fire you want to go but you're just tired like you're tired in your body you have been working and your brain is tired so it's really telling your systems no today is not the day we have to rest then that's okay never give it a bad meaning about you just reframe it i chose to have a lazy day instead of saying because of that I am lazy or I am a bad horse owner or I am not the rider I want to be. That's linking to things that are not directly related. So understand this, how this works and reframe it for yourself that even if you don't get to do what you wanted to do, you don't make it mean anything negative about you so that you do not get into that downward spiral. So I promised I would give you the ultimate solution. <clears throat> and that would be to always stay true to your word and to own your word. Many times um, there are things we say and then we don't act upon it. You say you're going to call back your friend or you want to reply to a message right away, but then you don't, and then you forget it. Or you say, I'll get back to you. Or even at work, um, sometimes we just say what other people want to hear and we already know we're not going to do it. Or sometimes we have a good intention and we say we are going to do something. And at that moment, we really wanted to, but then somehow we don't get to it and it just, the idea just fades away. We know we didn't do what we said we would, but then we just leave it at that. And it, it fades a bit into the background and then it could happen again. Um, the, th the thing with motivation is really that you are wanting to do something uh, and it's an agreement not between you and another person. Like, hey, I'll call you back tomorrow. And then you forget to call that person. So you had an agreement with the other person and you didn't do it. But in the case of motivation for something that you want to do yourself, you're making an agreement with yourself. So, for example, I am making my training plan for my horse. And I want to ride four times this week. And then I don't do it. Then the agreement between me and myself has been broken. Um, and staying true to your word is not really, okay, 
I never have to promise anything again. I never have to say I'm going to do anything again if I'm not 100% sure I'm really going to make it. That's also, it's not that black and white, um, but it's a way of thinking about it that will really solve your, um, your motivation issue in a way that it's more important for you to keep your word and stay true to your own word, to yourself, than um, if you have the motivation to go or not. Because if it's really important for me to really stick to what I've said, then I'm going to go anyway, even if I'm unmotivated and I don't want to go. I also have these evenings. My boyfriend is at home. It's nice and warm. If I want to go riding, I need to go outside in the dark and it's cold and I have to hitch the trailer to the car and drive my horse to the uh, indoor arena because we don't have one at home. So it's a lot of things to, to do. And it's easy to say, well, maybe today I'm not going. But what about tomorrow? Will you then be going if you say you're going to go tomorrow, but you didn't go today? Uh, all that stuff starts again. So if you make a hairdresser's appointment and you know those people are counting on you to come, then you'll go. If you have paid for something and you have a ticket, then at that time that, I don't know, the movie airs in the theater or something like that, you're going to go. So you are actually the most important person to yourself and your horse is also the, <laughs> the most important horse for you. So make your word, the thing you wanted to do, the agreement that you have with yourself, Make it that important that you will always bypass the thinking brain that wants to keep you safe and comfortable. I hope you can see how this would be the ultimate solution. Um, but because there are so many ways that uh, we don't stay true to our word, it's, it's difficult to go from uh, our current situation and sometimes not not doing what we say to all of a sudden from from today to tomorrow switch to okay now i'm always going to do what i said that's going to be a gradual journey for you um and maybe now that you're aware of it you're going to catch yourself more often like oh wow that was something i said i would do and didn't do again it's going to start to pop up and you're going to recognize it more often and more often and then slowly but surely you're also going to uh, think about it more when you speak out uh, your future. So um, this will be this will be kind of a, a journey we will be on until at some point we might really feel uncomfortable when we don't do what we said. And if we cannot or we have to change our plan and we are consciously going to change it and inform the people involved. So also, if I wanted to train today and I couldn't, it would be a choice. And I would say, well, now I choose to not do it. It's not like I don't feel like it. I'm not going to do it. And I don't care what I've uh, agreed with myself before. It's really going to be a conscious choice and a new agreement. So, But you're going to become more and more aware of that over time. So here are three tips for motivation that you can start using right away. Um, so as soon as there is a day in the coming week where you find yourself, uh, I don't want to go, it's cold outside, and hmm, or I'm just a bit tired and it was a hard day at work, but I know riding would make me happy right now. I just need to kick my own butt into movement. <laughs> then there, these are the three things you can do. The first one is to trick your brain. So your brain wants you to be comfortable, wants you to save energy, wants you to prevent any pain or discomfort. So you could trick your brain by making the pain of not going bigger than the discomfort that's keeping you from going. So for example, going now means it's cold and dark and icky outside and I have to move, although it's not so nice and cozy on the couch, but the pain of not going is your horse only staying in his stable. Um, will he not have moved uh, today? Like 
moved his muscles, maybe just in the cold weather, it's even more important for a horse to have his training and his movement uh, on a regular basis. Maybe you could increase your own pain by, oh no, if I don't go today, that means I might not go tomorrow. And that means I might not go three days from now. And that means I might not even train my horse, horse the whole week. And that would be, you know, unthinkable of a problem. So if you kind of exaggerate the story to trick your brain of thinking, well, this is really not that discomfortable or that hard to do. The other alternative would be much, much worse. Um, yeah, for everybody, this is different. And it might feel a little bit uh, silly maybe, but it really, really works. Like we want to move towards something we desire or some pleasure, but we always want to move away from a pain. And it's scientifically proven that people will do more to move away from pain than to move towards pleasure. So that's why this is the way to trick your brain, like make it make the problem of not going really exaggerated, really big. It has to be realistic. It's like it's not like your horse is going to die if you don't go riding today, but um, make that pain of oh, if I have to start training again next week, and he hasn't been ridden all week, you know, maybe your horse will be very fresh or difficult to handle or stuff like that. Really think about how it could go wrong if you don't go. Then the second tip is to uh, have consistency in our actions. So when we are at home and we prepare to go riding, then there's always uh, a routine. So for example, for me, that is first I change. So I have to go put on other clothing. Um, what is that first little step for you that you can take if you don't feel like uh, stepping up and going? Maybe just start with putting on your riding clothes. And then if you go back watching TV or something, that may, might feel a little bit weird, out of order. Like now I'm already sitting here all dressed to go and I'm not going. And this... Uh, this routine that is then not fitting is also going to trick your brain to say, no, if we have these clothes on, then the next step is <laughs> because we are so, we have so many habits. So what is the very first little step that you can take? And you don't have to convince your brain like, well, we're going to go riding and do all these things, but no, we're just going to put on the shoes. <laughs> Or I'm going to sit here in my riding helmet or something, you know, just that doesn't work. So then you, you're, you're going to have to take the next step. And the third one is that action builds momentum. So when we have tricked ourselves and we have found that consistency that we are going to follow in our actions, then doing those actions over time consistently will build momentum. So if you make a plan, you know, some days of the week you have, you need time to rest. You don't have, you know, you don't have to train your horse 100% uh, every day. You can do relaxing days in between. You can do some recovery trainings that are easier. So if you make a plan ahead and for example, you always know on your last working day of the week, you're really tired and exhausted then. You know, don't expect yourself to do your biggest, best training on that evening, for example. And then if you have a plan that you think, well, in theory, this might really work very well and I will be riding as much as I would like to, then try to stick to that plan for four weeks at least. This is the time that we need to form a new habit. And if it's a habit to go riding every Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, for example, then it will be easier to maintain that momentum because you will not even be thinking about it. Do I go today? Do I not go? What do I do? It is Monday. So because we are creatures of habit, every Monday I ride and your, your whole day is uh, planned to do so. And all your appointments that you make with others, no, on Monday I can't. I can go to the hairdresser or I can meet uh, this or that person because Monday is a riding day. So following this plan consistently for at least four weeks, you will encounter 
many situations uh, that might try to derail your plan. If you can keep it up and stick to it for four weeks, then after that, it will become very, very easy to maintain that same rhythm. And even then, maybe you can start adding. If, it's, if you start with maybe, well, at some point, I would like to train my horse five days a week, and you just start with two or three days, and you can stick to that for four weeks, it will be easier than just going from zero to five days like an instant decision and um, keeping it up on, from, from Monday uh, onward, from tomorrow onward already, uh, yeah, making that big leap, making that big step. That would take really a lot of willpower. And um, then you can really use time in your advantage. Just take two or three trainings, four weeks, then add a fourth one, four weeks. It's just like going to the gym. If you never work out and all of a sudden you're going six days straight, then you might wish you never tried fitness or <laughs> any kind of sports. So this is a little bit the same thing. Don't exhaust yourself. Uh, if it has been difficult to keep up a schedule, then make it a realistic schedule, but make that appointment with yourself that you are going to stick with it for four weeks because you know afterwards your brain will help you in keeping up the habit and you make your heart passion um, a priority and it will be easy you will make it happy and the last thing of course you don't have to go alone if you want to master this together of really showing up for your horse as good and as often as you would like to, uh, then accountability. So sharing your word, that you, your, your agreement with yourself, sharing it with others so that they can hold you accountable and sharing your plans with friends. Um, if that is really what will uh, bring you further, then uh, and you're not surrounded by people like that, you're not surrounded by people at the moment that will help you stay true to your word and tell you, hey, you said you were going to go riding today, so move your butt off the couch. Or if you don't have people that help you stick to the plans you've made, that motivate you, that help you, maybe they you know, drive you to, to the stable, it can be anything. Or people that build uh, that help you building a consistent routine that works for you and your horse. So you have nobody to maybe bounce ideas off of and discuss these kind of things, what would work, what would not work. Then I'm inviting you to join our uplifting community because that's exactly what we are doing now for uh, since the beginning of the month, we have uh, started, and uh, this is exactly what I see happening between members, that they start sharing with each, with each other what their plans are, and it was difficult for them to find motivation, especially with winter kicking in, and now they're telling me, well, now that I know that afterwards I will be telling you guys what I've been spending my time on, uh, it's much easier. I really want to go because I already look forward to what happens after, so... Uh, the pleasure part of doing it actually becomes even bigger. And it's uh, also less difficult because you already have new ideas, new inspiration, uh, your motivation rises. So that is something uh, you should never forget. We are here for you. And if you would like then please let me know. I could share uh, a little look around inside our community and how we um, motivate each other, how we share things that are going on. Or if you have any other questions on the topic that I've just shared, then please let me know in the chat. How was this? presentation for you guys. Did you have something new, a new idea, a key takeaway? Yeah, please show the community. Okay, cool. Thank you. I will. Great points and useful. Thank you. That's nice to hear you guys. Thank you. 
it's really stuff that will help you in any area of life <laughs> even uh, with friends family uh, in your job anywhere but uh, yeah learning this because of our horses is of course uh, yeah we're the most motivated to to learn about ourselves our horses learn us so much about us and help us improve yes to a sneak peek inside the community okay cool let me open another tab and start my share again so here we are this is basically the home page if you look at it from uh, the uh, PC so from the computer we also have an app so you can also look at this on your phone and you can see in the featured section that we had our week one and week two of the focus your ride challenge so I'm doing uh, more teaching like the presentation I just did and then the rest of the week we have a challenge that goes with that topic um, and basically this is just like um, a mix of a learning environment and a community uh, and you can also share just as a member it's not only posts that that i do or that i um, uh, that i have to write the members can actually start their own uh, posts and their own topics so for example wendy shared about a competition that she had and then uh, we had some conversations about how it was going and what uh, she was sharing we also discussed during the next uh, challenge week and um, we have cool uh, poll polls that we can do so uh, I was seeing some discussions inside the community and I thought well maybe it's cool if we get together on zoom and people can also really come on screen and share with each other and we had a great discussion so now I've added this to our uh, events so we not only have a training opportunity on Monday uh, just like this one on the crowdcast but we also get together on zoom once a week and you can see uh, I'm not sure if you can see this but I have a little uh, yeah um, you can see that uh, we can share posts but also articles so in this way uh, for the this week there is a um, just a summary of what we will be going through so in week two we discovered different ways to improve the connection with our horse and i shared some examples of passive and active connection training um, the live sessions are just like this one on Crowdcast and the cool thing about it is that you can just go back and, and uh, watch it again. Um, and I make worksheets for every week that help everybody to uh, yeah, go through their homework and their coursework. So there is some st stuff to think about at home, to fill out, uh, to journal on, and then uh, some things that are planned to do with our horse in that week. and then. We come back into the community and share. So, for example, you can see here from the week one training, uh, we were focusing on observation training. And Linda made a report for everybody to uh, share what she was going to do with her horse and how it went, um, what her observations were during that training. Um, yeah, and then we discuss it already inside the community before our next live call. So, of course, I like to share as well. <laughs> Every member is a sharing member, participating member. Nobody has to uh, wait for others to share. Here you can also see that you can reply to others with your own ideas and pictures. Wendy has been uh, practicing for a dressage competition and had a great idea to already <laughs> practice with the flowers and decoration that can sometimes uh, spook your horse um, yeah little questions just to get to know each other
always nice to see the beautiful courses we are all doing this for and improving ourselves for. And uh, yeah, it's uh, really cool. And um, we have touch points multiple times a week. Uh, if you go through the, the tabs, then on the home screen, you just see everything as I scroll, scroll through right now. If you go to discovery, then you can see different topics like the top posts that are uh, ongoing now, M members near you. Well, nobody is very near me. <laughs> and the upcoming events that you can uh, RSVP for if you are going or not going and our different topics. And you can also find everything that is on the discovery page back here. Uh, the topics are basically to um, find back things. So for example, now we're going through the focus your training. And if I go back into this uh, topic, then I just find the stuff that's uh, related to that. So you see the next event and the, the questions that I asked or pe what people shared relating to that topic uh, and the presentations and articles as I've shared, you can open it from here. Um, so that way you can just find back everything very easily. And here we have our events that are coming up. So as you can see, tomorrow we're going for week three of Focus Your Ride. So we're doing a Crowdcast again. And then every Thursday there's a get together and share. So this is not a teaching moment, but just members getting together, teaching what, the, uh, sharing, I'm sorry, <laughs> sharing what they have been doing with our horses and then just exchanging ideas. So um, we can find similarities between our horses and help each other out. For example, on the last get together, uh, Linda shared that uh, she has a horse that came to her and was pretty dangerous in the beginning uh, in the stall, so she couldn't get into the box with her horse. Um, or the horse would just push her against the wall or do, do things really um, yeah, in a dangerous way, so she doesn't get in there. And Wendy had the exact same thing, that she cannot go into the stable of her horse because he had bad experiences in the past and will get uh, very aggressive. So really also the, kind of a similar situation. Uh, Linda's horse is a mare and is a bit less severe, but still they had the same reaction. So they could exchange on that topic like, hey, how do you work? How do you do that? Um, Wendy could share uh, her tips on how she approaches her horse now and uh, yeah, the, the habits and routines she has created. And uh, that will help Linda in her approach. So yeah, you can see until, until Christmas, the week before Christmas, uh, we have events planned. Then we do a little break because everybody's busy with the holidays. And then in January, of course, a new year, a new me, a new horse. <laughs> we kick it off again and uh, there will be uh, events scheduled for the coming year. And right here, you can also see that you could even connect with other team members based on discipline. So if you're interested in eventing and you see, hey, there's already a member here, then you can connect with them and follow them, be friends. You can chat with them directly. So yeah, that's basically the most of what I can share with you right now without actually going into the details. So let me know, how does that look for you guys? Would that be something that you might be interested in and want to know more about? And I see a question from Carolyn, maybe a little weird, but what if my horse doesn't want to ride, even though that I would really like to? How do you approach that? I want her also to enjoy our sessions. Yes, of course, that's the way to approach it, to have the horse enjoy uh, what you're doing. <laughs> so <laughs> that makes sense. Um, so far as my own experience goes with horses and also as a trainer now with students riding. Um, if the horse really doesn't want to be ridden and is very clear about that, uh, there was always a reason. So we always found something that was going on. So 
it's a bit difficult to answer your question. Like uh, if the horse doesn't want to be ridden and is really clear about it, I would not make it. So that is the only answer I can give. Um, it has to become a positive experience again. If maybe in the uh, in the past your horse had bad experiences, so then it's really a uh, a training approach that you start finding what the horse does like to do, um, finding ways that you can reward often and soon. Um, she had a burnout. Oh wow! Yeah, so overworked probably or over. I guess that wasn't with you then. Jane says, thanks for the look inside, looks good. Yeah. It is really nice. And I'll just share the link again. for everybody that wants to check out and join us. Um, Carolyn, no with me, but I didn't catch it on time. Oh, yeah. Well, also very important here to um, not get into a negative spiral. Like, forgive yourself. You you always loved your horse. You always did your the things that you did with a good intention. Uh, you just didn't know. Probably you didn't even know that a horse can have a burnout. I think many people never, never even heard of that. Um, so just like with the motivational part, don't give it any meaning about you that you are now uh, not good enough for your horse or that you never ever should have any expectations of her or something like that. So I know it might be difficult or sometimes we don't even admit it but uh, yeah um, and I would really um, approach it in a way that if she had if she had a burnout that now she always needs to indicate how much you can do so imagine you would have an employee at a company that had a burnout then uh, the, the approach to reintegrate that person into the working life is always going very slowly. Uh, do just a little and uh, see when they start offering more. Like, okay, I feel like I can work one more hour per week now. I feel good and I'm going to try to do a bit more now. Um, and I think that uh, with your horse, that might also be a good approach. Try working a lot with her from the ground. Uh, that you really strengthen uh, the notion of, hey, if I do something, there's something in it for me. She needs to really uh, see that and keep your sessions very short, that uh, she doesn't get tired, also mentally. And then I would take it from there that maybe if she offers to do a little bit more, then maybe you can ride for five minutes and then you you stop again. So really baby steps, I would say. And also make sure that nothing is uh, in the way of healthy riding and healthy movement when, when you are riding. So check her uh, overall physical state and the saddle and all these kind of things that there is nothing that could trigger a negative re reaction or emotion in her again. So let me know, Carolyn, if, if that's helpful for you. Kim says, I like the idea of a four week training plan and the community looks great. Thank you. Yeah, the community would look even better with all you guys in it. And I'm very sure that uh, it will just yeah, skyrocket your, <laughs> your progress because if we go together, then yeah, we learn more, we learn faster, we see more examples. I mean, it's very different than just learning from one person or one training. If you can come into a community that works with the, the values that you feel at home also and uh, the values in the community that you also uh, feel good about and you know you're in a safe place to share about your progress, about your struggles, about the things that are not going so good and you know nobody's going to make you feel like you're not good enough. We are all going to uplift uplift you and um, 
help you find your path and your next steps and uh, yeah really feel carried by by the others so even if the community is still a bit small right now i can already feel it so that's why i know it's really powerful once we start to grow kim says should i focus on relationship first just being with the horse well that depends uh, some people do. So it is one question I ask in the community right at the beginning. Like, would you like, I have three pillars of horse development. If we want to have a great partnership with our horse and perform in a certain way, um, then we need to build our relationship, our understanding. So the communication, but also that our communication is really understood by the horse um, and the biomechanics. So some people might already have a very good relationship and the horse also understand what they want, but is just physically not trained enough to do what they want to do, or that would be their uh, next step. So they focus more on the biomechanics part. Uh, so that totally depends on you and your horse, if you should now focus on the relationship. So we try to cover all three. And what we work on inside the community is that we choose monthly themes. So you could choose to this month, if you want to improve your relationship, you can have your focus on that. But then next month you will have a new focus for your monthly theme and make sure that you don't only work on the relationship, but also on the other two. Carolyn says, I changed our writing completely. We write bareback allow her what she wants i stopped with the previous trainer and i have her at home again has been almost three years we ride just sometimes and really relax but i wish we can go more to my ambitious side well carolyn you are the ideal member for my horse plan community i'm telling you the others are on the exact same path well maybe not had such a experience with their horse but also finding a way to going from, well, I'm kind of okay with my horse, but I would like to do more. But how do I take my horse with me on that journey so that they enjoy it as much as I do? So yeah, I can totally, totally, totally relate to that. And uh, there's this shift that we have to make, like, my horse likes me and I never over ask and it's always relaxed and easy. And then at some point, OK, but now I, I want a little bit more and that's OK as as an owner, because we can see ahead that it will also help the horse to want a bit more than just only relaxed riding. Um, and yeah, how uh, how do I make it feel that my horse should also want what I want. And most of the time it also has to a lot to do with us to make it OK for ourselves, even after such an experience that you've had, to start uh, requesting again, to start asking questions again. And it has a lot of, of the, the way and the intention behind it and the clarity of your questions to your horse that she can really give a yes answer and then be rewarded for that again. Uh, that is a big part of it. I'm so happy you guys joined today live. It's really nice to chat with you and talk horses on Sunday evening. <laughs> Couldn't be better. So if any of you want to know more or maybe get on a, on a chat or um, on a private call, uh, we can just have a normal <laughs> phone call uh, about joining the community or what's in there for you, then just let me know. You all have my email address. You can send me a contact uh, through my website. Yes, Carolyn, uh, how to approach that? Well, just to uh, keep it inside the time frame of uh, tonight, the most important thing for you would be to ask one question 
to be very clear what you want and that your horse can give a clear answer and then we reward. But really only one question, like um, a transition, for example. I want to improve our walk to trot transition and I don't want to do it really freestyle and relaxed, but I want to do it a little bit more collected and then trot, for example. Or maybe you want to do some sideways or uh, something else. It doesn't. It it the, it doesn't matter what you choose, what you do, but it really has to be one question that your horse can give a specific answer, and you will know, yes, she did it, or no, not yet. And then as soon as yes, she did it, then big reward, whatever that is for your horse. That would be your way forward to approach everything like that. And every training that you feel your horse is really in a nice uh, frame of mind, really offering, really open to suggestions from your side, then you do very focused, like five to ten minutes. You do this one question, you, maybe you repeat it a few times, and you every time that she does it, yes, big reward. Then she will be waiting for questions from you, and you will be able to ask more and more. Thank you, Kim. Really, I'm really happy that you enjoyed this evening. Thank you, Jane. It's morning, so you need to go to work. Well, I hope you are energized and motivated, and after work you get some horse time in, maybe. Uh, it was a pleasure to, to share this on this topic with you guys tonight, and you know how to find me if you have any more questions. And yeah, look out for the invitation for the next one. I would say, and I'm really, really, really uh, looking forward to seeing you guys inside my horse plan. That will really be your next step. For now, open to suggestions and the transitions. Thanks a lot. We'll look at the horse plan. Okay, great. So happy that you were here. Thank you so much for joining and for anybody catching this on the replay. If there are any more questions, please let me know. Send me an email, send me a DM on Instagram, send me a private message on Facebook, whatever. Uh, I'm always uh, loving to hear from you guys. Thank you, Gonya. Nice that you were here with us. Okay, bye-bye. If you want to catch the replay or watch the presentation again later, it's the same link. So right after we finish now, you can uh, watch it back. So have fun with your horses and send me your questions via email or wherever. And I will get back to you. Bye-bye.